Are diets actually making things worse? Today we get into the basics of the mind-body connection and different approaches to health. Welcome to the series, I'm Alicia and I'm so happy you're here. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. All month long we have content coming Monday through Friday, but remember, if you want the additional materials on top of the video, like all the downloads and that good stuff, you've gotta sign up for the emails, it's free, and you can sign up at mindovermunch.com slash food freedom. Okay. Today, mind-body connection. We're going a little bit deeper. We've touched on it. You know, we talked about Whole30. We've talked about how food affects mental health. And I told you, pretty much I went to grad school for mindfulness because I knew I healed my relationship with food, but I wasn't sure how I did it through mindfulness. And this is how I came to this concept of inner and outer wisdom. And it ultimately led me to realize this was a holistic approach to health. So a holistic approach is the actual definition, characterized by comprehension of the parts of something as intimately interconnected and explicable only by reference to the whole. Interconnectedness. Okay, so we've got to briefly talk about the difference between Eastern and Western approaches to health. First, the word health. Does it look like health? The word health originates from the word how, okay? It's an Anglo-Saxon word which actually means whole. Now, let me change colors. So heal, the word heal, actually means to make whole again. <gasps> oh my gosh! Did that blow your mind like mine? Okay, so this is where Eastern approaches to health really value the interconnectedness of the mind, the body, and the emotions, and how they affect each other a lot more deeply than Western approaches. This would be called a more integrated approach, like if you've heard of integrative medicine. I like to think about health as a triangle. So if we've got, you know, the physical, mental, and emotional. So if physical is like the body, mental is intellect, and emotional self is your emotional self. So uh, some people might also add in beep, 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 spiritual self over here. We have this triangle where our health really comes from addressing each of these equally. With Western medicine and the Western model of science, which is more focused on reductionism, it's really about fixing the symptom rather than the root cause. And they tend to stay in the realm of the physical. So take blood pressure, for example. If you go to the doctor and you have high blood pressure, they're gonna probably give you blood pressure medication. Now this addresses the symptom of high blood pressure rather than really getting to the root cause. So last week we talked about how stress and emotions that we don't know how to deal with can lead to us overeating, it leads to us turning to food to cope. So is the answer to really address the eating? This is what we do in our society. We go, oh, I'm overeating and I'm getting, you know, I'm getting fat because of it. I'm getting sick because of it. And people go, well then go on a diet, right? But the root cause is the stress. So this is the difference. The Western approach is you deal with the symptom and the Eastern approach is you deal with the root cause. This would be called preventative care. So the West doesn't prioritize preventative health, but rather tries to fix it after the fact. It's more a form of illness care than health care. Now, if we prevent it from happening in the first place, we don't have to fix it later. And this is essentially what it means to take responsibility for your health, is to practice preventative care. We're not waiting for someone to tell us what to do. Now, I'm not shaming anyone. We are told to wait. This is how our medical system is set up and how Western science has evolved. And I'm really not a crazy conspiracy theorist. Uh, you know, my dad is actually a cardiologist. This is just how our society has set up medicine. And the fact is that over time, Western medicine evolved viewing humans as machines, separate from nature, reducible to its parts. It's very mechanical. And while humans may, you know, function similarly in the grand scheme of our species, we are each individuals that need something slightly different based on our genetics, our environment, our lifestyle, and really everything we've ever experienced. So if you go back to that blood pressure medication example, you know, this shows that in the West, we go to the doctor, we get prescribed blood pressure medication, and we're not really encouraged to take responsibility. The doctor might kind of say, and maybe it's getting a little better, you know, they might kind of say offhand, oh yeah, there are lifestyle factors, you could change your diet, you could exercise more, but you know, take the pill, this is really what you're gonna need to do. And I think that's because 
because they don't think we can take responsibility and it creates this terrible cycle where they think we can't and then we don't because you know we want to listen to our doctors and we want to do the right thing but then we don't take responsibility and then we think we need to depend on the experts and it just goes round and round and round so the west now is starting to realize there is some sort of connection and this is mostly through stress right western medicine acknowledges okay stress is a mental state but it also affects us physically our stress response affects our blood pressure our hormones our digestive system you already know this but if we know stress is one of the root causes like stress leads to emotional eating which might lead to health problems why aren't we addressing it we go instead to the blood pressure the hormones the digestive system the weight gain those are all the symptoms if you want to break the cycle you go to the root so I'm gonna get a little bit into the science here. Just stay with me. This is relevant to the rest of the series and I'm getting to a point, but I just have to, I just have to put some context out there. While researching for school, I learned about a concept called systems theory. It's by a guy called Dr. Richard Schwartz, who essentially says that everything is connected to everything else. These systems are regarded as whole, like a body, for instance, rather than its aggregate parts. This is really what holistic and integrated health is all about. So for, for instance, a headache is not necessarily a problem in the head. A stomach ache may not be something wrong with the stomach, right? So reducing the whole body to its parts. We have to look at the big picture of how the various parts interact. Now, what's so cool about systems theory, ooh, is it argues that this integrated and interactive process will regulate itself. Meaning our bodies know what they need and they will take care of themselves if we know how to listen. This is called self-regulation, okay? A system, like a body, maintains its health and functioning and it can change and adapt to circumstances by communicating with all the various parts of its whole. It regulates itself. This makes sense, right? So our brain can send and receive messages all over the body. These messages are the way that it maintains its stability. And really what they are is feedback loops. So our body, our system can self-regulate to maintain health and stability. But if those feedback loops are disrupted, then we experience what is called dysregulation. Dysregulation means that the system, our bodies in this example, are not able to maintain health and regulate. And this leads to dis-ease. You see what I did there, Joe? Oh! Ah! Disease, disease, come on. Okay, come on, that's supposed to be a mind-blowing moment. You gotta no, make it, it mind-blowing. So you're following me? Wow. <laughs> so Schwartz, the, the systems theory guy, he suggests that treating the symptoms rather than the root cause, like we do with Western medicine, can actually negatively impact some of those feedback loops and regulatory processes. So a great example, and the whole reason for getting through all of that is to talk about this video, which is dieting. Dieting is a textbook example of dysregulation. Here's our cycle. We've got our stress and our emotions and we don't know how to handle it. So we turn to food and we turn to food to cope. We turn to food for comfort. We turn to food because we have some, you know, emotional hunger that's not being filled. And because of this, we might gain weight. We might get sick. We might have health problems. So what happens? You go to your doctor, or you go on the internet and they tell you, oh, you've got to go on a diet. Okay. And what happens is the diet leads to more stress because you never actually lose the weight. I think it's something like 95% of diets, uh, I don't know if it's if it's appropriate to say they fail, but 95% of people who go on diets end up gaining the weight back or something like that. I, I didn't actually check this statistic, um, but you guys have probably heard this by now if you've looked at all into diet culture. The point I wanna make right now is about dieting and dysregulation. Studies show that in infancy and toddlerhood, okay, when we're really little kids, our eating is instinctual, it's intuitive. We are born with this inner wisdom that will guide us to eat the right amounts of food and the types of nutrients. I'm not making it up, it's studied. So this is shown when kids actually get to choose their food, they typically make healthier choices because they know how to listen to their bodies. So hunger, hunger is a signal. It's a feedback loop and it lets our bodies know that we need fuel. Full 
fullness is a signal. Fullness, being full, it's a feedback loop. And it lets us know, oh, we've had enough food. Now, as we grow, our experiences, our thoughts, our feelings, everything conditions our behavior. Our culture, our doctors, our media, they tell us, you gotta diet to lose weight. But diet is actually often a physiological starvation to the body because we ignore the feedback loops. We don't eat when we're hungry or stop when we're full. We eat because it's time. We eat an amount of food, not based on how much we feel we need right now or how hungry we are, but how many calories are in it. You know, all of this ignores those cues. And the more we ignore, the more we get dis, I shouldn't have erased it, dysregulated and eventually our body's gonna stop signaling because we're not paying attention to the feedback loops, which is why if you've ever dieted, you might've noticed you're not hungry. Our feedback loops stop working. They talk in the whole 30. They want you to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, three meals a day. People are like, well, what if I'm not hungry for breakfast? She goes, probably, you know, your hormones need to be re-regulated. This is why intermittent fasting or keto, you might not be hungry for breakfast or dinner. You might not eat to, need to eat three meals a day because your hormones change, they adjust and get used to eating less. But really what happens is we disconnect, we dysregulate. So then when we try to listen, we can't hear anything because it's not speaking anymore. Now it doesn't mean that there's no coming back from it, but it requires intentionally tuning in and dieting might get in the way. It might be, I would suggest, an outer wisdom tool that needs to be put on hold while we build up the faculty of inner wisdom first. It's also worth noting that anxiety and depression also stem from disordered feedback loops. And if you really do believe the mind and body are connected, which I do, you start to see how it all affects everything else. The food affects my mental and physical health. My emotions affect both. My physical and mental health affect each other. The triangle, right? The triangle of health, physical, mental, emotional. And some people, like I said, might even add spiritual in there. Up to you. So this is what I wanted to touch on today. Really, what is a holistic integrative approach to health as well as what's dysregulation? What it, how is dieting a form of dysregulation? I'm gonna refer back to these concepts throughout the series and in the email today, I have given some downloads so you can review them. You might wanna watch the video. Again, I know it's a lot to take in, but this is also a foundational concept for everything else I believe about the mind-body connection and how to heal our relationships with food. I am gonna provide some specific tools to help you you learn how to tune into those inner wisdom feedback loops in the coming days in the rest of the series. In the meantime, I ask please kindly in the comments, you know, what are your thoughts on the mind and body being connected? Do you feel that this is true for you? I also want to remind you that, you know, because we have worked so hard to create this series, I, it was so important to me to offer it at no cost, especially the course and the course materials. If you're interested in supporting the series and the channel through a donation, and we've created a donation page that I've linked below. No obligation, of course, the content is gonna remain free, but if you wanna help support us continuing this kind of content, it's there. And I appreciate everyone who's already donated and those of you who will choose to maybe in the future. Either way, thanks for being here. If there's someone that you think this video might resonate with, please share it with them on your social media. It really means the world to me. Thank you so much. And I mean, I think today we can finally say we know without a doubt that it really is a matter of mind over munch.